Elvis, come on. We're going to go and do a tag. Come on. No? You don't want to? Yes, that's a good boy. Come on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. And uh, I have a tag video for you today. Um, I was tagged by Cena at Beating Around the Books uh, in the Bar and the Bookcase tag, which was created by Jalen at the Bar and the Bookcase. Um, I have no idea who to tag because one scene has tagged quite a few people and I've seen a lot of people do it around uh, booktube already. Um, so I will, uh, I might tag one or two people at the end, but they've probably done it or at least already been tagged. So the bar in the bookcase contains a series of prompts related to different uh, types of drinks, cocktails, mixes, etc. Um, I used to be quite a big drinker, um, nothing... Um, you know, too excessive, of course, but I certainly enjoyed going uh, out and having several drinks, uh, of, of you know, before COVID and things like that. But I haven't really drunk much since uh, COVID started. I'm not one for drinking at home. Um, I'm more of a person, you know, who enjoys sitting at the bar in a, in a pub or something. Uh, you know, I'm very lucky that I live here in the Czech Republic with probably um, some of the best beer in the world. And uh, I do enjoy my beer. I certainly drink more beer than I drink uh, wine or any other uh, types of uh, drinks. I'm not a huge one for cocktails. I do drink the occasional mix, uh, mixed drink. Um, but yeah, so anyway, let's go on. So the first prompt is uh, Old Fashioned. Uh, and this is a historical fiction recommendation. This is very difficult for me as it's probably one of my favorite genres to read. Uh, and for this, I went with a book called uh, Ovid uh, by David Wishart. And it's the first in quite a long series. I think there are over 20 books. Um, and it uh, follows the adventures of a, a Roman um, aristocrat called um, Marcus Corvinus. And he goes on a series of uh, adventures usually related to some kind of murder or mystery or something like that during uh, ancient Rome. Um, Steve Donahue talked about this in one of his videos uh, and, uh, you know, he was very complimentary about it and I completely agree with him. I really enjoy the Marcus Corvina series by uh, David Wishart. Uh, in Ovid, it's all related to the poet and the mystery surrounding uh, or the problem surrounding the return of his ashes after he had died uh, to Rome uh, and kind of finding out this conspiracy uh, that involved both uh, Ovid the poet and uh, the Emperor. I won't say much more. It's a great book. Check them out. Um, for sure. Definitely. The next one is Sidecar. Uh, this is a book with a strong supporting character. For this, I've gone for another historical fiction series, and this is the Shard Lake series by C.J. Uh, Sansom. Uh, and I go for the character of Jack Barrack, who is Matthew Shard Lake's um, sidekick, if you like in uh, all the novels except the first one. Uh, he doesn't appear in that one. Um, or certainly, I can't remember if he does or not, but he's certainly not, uh, he's certainly not the supporting character in that, in that first uh, book. But he's a great character. He seems to get everything uh, done. He's, um, he's very loyal to the main character and uh, you know he's always got his back. So I would certainly say uh, Jack Barrack is a very strong supporting character in the Shard Lake books. Next, Manhattan. So this is a book set in New York. Um, I struggled with this one, and then I remembered a book I read years and years and years ago. Uh, I was probably in my teens, and it was by um, an author called Leslie Thomas. And this is a book called Orders for New York. And it was, again, I suppose, a, a historical fiction that was based on um, a true event of some Nazi agents landing in New York City. I think it was in 19... 42, they arrived by submarine, they were betrayed by their commanding officer, and they were executed in the electric chair. And this book follows the story of an English journalist who happens to be in New York at the time that this happens. And um, there's a, again, there's a, there's a conspiracy, and he, uh, you know, it goes probably very close to the top, and he has to try and find out what it is. It's not a book you can easily get hold of, um, certainly in a hard copy. You can get them 
um, for Kindle, actually. I get most of Leslie Thomas's books on Kindle, actually, for only around 99 pence, which I think is pretty good, and he's quite a fun writer. Uh, the book itself, when I looked it up on Goodreads, does get mixed reviews, but, you know, I enjoyed it. But then, of course, at the time, I was probably only around 13, 14 years old, so, uh, you know, maybe I wouldn't enjoy it so much now. I would have to maybe reread it. Next, Bloody Mary, a book that scared you or messed you up. I'll go for a book I mentioned in a, in a previous video, uh, which is The Wolf and the Watchman by Niklaus uh, Nat, uh, da, Dag Ok Nat, uh, Nicholas Night and Day, his name. Um, I wouldn't say it scared me particularly, but it certainly messed me up because of the nature of the crime in that book. It's pretty horrific, and I won't say much more than that because I've talked about it before already, but that's certainly the one that sprang to mind for this prompt. Next is The Espresso Martini. A book that kept you reading into the night. Well, I've had lots of them in my time, but certainly at the moment, a book I find very hard to put down uh, once I go to bed and keeps me up quite late is North and South by John Jakes. Fantastic book. I can't believe I've never read it before. Uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's uh, one of those kind of classic um, sagas, uh, family sagas, uh, and it's in the lead up to the American Civil War. Um, haven't got there yet, uh, but um, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Really well written and a lot of fun uh, and very informative. You know, I, I know very little about that period uh, of history or very little really about a lot of American history. So this is quite interesting for me. Uh, next, Sazerac, a book that left you disorientated. Quite difficult for me, um, I would say. Uh, I suppose one that kept me thinking, certainly after I read it, um, was um, The Shadow of the Wind, which I've also talked about in previous videos. I think this had quite a kind of haunting nature to it uh, that made me think, um, certainly ponder it after I read it. I wouldn't really say disoriented, disorientated, uh, but I haven't really come across too many that have done that to me. Um, so yeah, I'd say The Shadow of the Wind, very beautiful book. Um, but I'm sure it's one that's been you know, reviewed to death probably on, on Booktube. Uh, next, A Long Island Iced Tea, a book that is doing too much. Bonus point if it works anyway. Again, I wasn't sure about this one. Um, the one that came to mind was maybe Good Omens by uh, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Very good book. I mean, everybody really likes it. I liked it, but I wasn't... I don't know, I found it quite strange to read, and maybe in my opinion it was doing too much. There was a lot, kind of a lot going on, and I felt it did, f I felt it was a bit maybe disjointed, maybe it was a problem having two authors, two great authors. Uh, the book itself is, is definitely worth reading, but maybe for, for my money it was doing perhaps too much, and I'm not sure it did completely work. It could maybe have gone... A different direction. Of course, you might disagree with me, and um, you know you, you may you may be, well be right. But in my in my opinion, uh, I would put uh, Good Omens maybe down for this one. Next, Negroni, uh, a book with a love triangle. Again, I'm going with another book I mentioned recently, which is Glass House by Simon Mauer. Um, really enjoyed this book, uh, set in Czechoslovakia after the uh, shortly before its uh, annexation by Nazi Germany and the building of a glass um, house, um, although now actually, sorry, I think the name of the book is The Glass Room, uh, I don't keep wanting to call it The Glass House, it's The Glass Room I'm sure, you'll see anyway, it will be up here, um, and it's all kind of a fictional story based around the real life house, the real house rather, uh, the Villa Tugendhat near Brno, here in the Czech Republic, uh, and there's, a, there's a quite a nice kind of Love Triangle in that book, which is um, really pivotal as well to the to the story. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Uh, next, a Bay Breeze book with light a light with light, chill, heartwarming vibes. Um, I've gone for a series, but I've chosen the first book in the series for this one. And this is the case of the missing servant by Tarquin Hall, and it's the first book in a series featuring uh, the greatest Indian detective in the world, uh, Vishpuri. And I suppose, if you like, they are cosy uh, mysteries. Uh, they're all set in India. Uh, and the main character, this Vishpuri, is 
uh, a private detective who has to solve a series of murders and mysteries that occur in his patch of India. And it's, it's charming, very charming indeed, uh, especially the way uh, he has to deal with his domineering mother, um, who kind of gets involved in uh, following uh, up these mysteries herself as well. It's fantastic. I really recommend those. Uh, next, a dark and stormy. Oh, yeah, it's nice to see dark and stormy. It's a, a Bermudian drink, and of course that's where I grew up. So, uh, yeah, well, it's nice to see that it's made its way internationally. So, dark and stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. A bonus point of the setting matches. For this, I've gone for the English Monster by Lloyd Shepard. It is the first book in maybe I think a trilogy. Um, I only read this one. And it's about um, a series of gruesome murders that occurred um, back in, I think, the Elizabethan era. But suddenly these murders and the whole way they're done and um, all um, uh, all the evidence kind of points to the same person. But the problem is they're happening in the Regency period. So there's a good, uh, perhaps, you know, 150, 200 years separating uh, the two periods and that that was quite good and it certainly was very uh, dark and menacing uh, and quite gruesome actually but it was a it was a good book and the last one martini classic recommendation very difficult i like a lot of classics i was tempted to go with something like uh, the count of monte cristo which i think is fantastic but i thought i'd go with something perhaps a little less well read and uh, one that i really enjoyed which is taris bulba by uh, nikolai gogol um, it's a very it's a very short book. I think it's usually found in this book and short stories uh, together, uh, and it follows the story of uh, Ukrainian Cossacks um, and their kind of fight for uh, freedom and stuff against um, the encroaching uh, Polish Empire at the time. And Taras Bulba is their kind of leader, and he has uh, two sons. Um, you know, and uh, they kind of end up, uh, one son ends up being um, Polishized, perhaps. So he tends to stick with uh, the Poles and the other son stays with the Cossacks. And of course it leads, it kind of tears the family apart uh, when war breaks out. Um, it is also a classic film as well, uh, starring, I think, Kirk Douglas and Tony Curtis and maybe some others, but yeah, it's a, it's a great book anyway. Okay, so I'm not really sure, as I say, who to tag. Um, I will go, I'll go with Vin at Revenant Reads and anyone else who wants to do this video uh, or who wants to do this tag, you can consider yourself tagged. Because as I say, it seems like a lot of people have been tagged already. Super, so thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Take care, everybody. All the best. Bye-bye.